Coming up on Mountain News this morning, a group of Kentucky students spend some time outdoors while learning the joys of reading. And an Eastern Kentucky band celebrates the release of a brand new album. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News This Morning. It is Monday, Monday, March 28th, 6.32 a.m. Jim Freeman in. Glad you're in as well. And Brandon Robinson is talking 20s this morning and near 80 by Wednesday. Yes, sir. We are looking at a much nicer forecast as we head toward midweek, but we're not done <laughs> with Redbud just yet. Okay. All right. Let's get into it this morning. We'll go over to Pikeville, take a look at the camera over there. Not the Pikeville Medical Center camera, but the one on US 119, US 23 there near Pikeville Commons this morning. And you can see traffic starting to pick up as people get moving on this Monday. Temperatures again as we talked about 20s area wide 21 Irvin 22 Clintwood and Monticello everybody else 25 or above and it looks like Jackson Harlan and Jacksboro the warmest spots in the region all at 28 statewide 41 in Paducah heat wave out there 42 in Nashville but 24 in Cincinnati 29 in the Tri-Cities forecast for today 48 this afternoon a few more clouds will drift in a stray chance for a passing sprinkle or snowflake can't be ruled out overnight as temperatures drop back to near freezing Jim thank you Brandon the Madison County community is mourning after the sudden death of popular businessman and assistant coach to the Madison Central girls basketball team Chad Tate died on Saturday but as Jeremy Toms explains coach Tate's legacy and impact will keep his memory alive for years to come from playing at Madison Central in the 80s, to running Camp Cipria College, to returning to coach at his alma mater. He was a Madison Central guy through and through. Robert Cooksey says Chad Tate had a tremendous impact on the Madison County community. It's his entire life, it is, and uh, you know, and he, he treated it as such. So Cooksey and Principal Brandon Fritz were shocked and saddened to hear that he had died unexpectedly Saturday. Chad always made people smile, made people happy and feel important, and, and that's what's really, really gonna hurt us. Tate coached hundreds of kids through the years, but those that know him say for him, it wasn't just about elevating their game, it was about helping them succeed in life. Is He has a, a scholarship, uh, Chad Tate Shelter Insurance Scholarship, and he was really, really passionate about that, uh, and he just wanted to help people. Uh, Tate's leadership didn't stop when his players left either. After they graduated high school, he was always there for them. He was a phone call away if they needed something, if they needed guidance. He was also just a phone call away for Cooksey either a phone call or a text every day. Um, we talked, we talked a lot. And, um, you know, he was a, a, a huge supporter of me in my career. And those phone calls will be missed by all who knew Chad Tate. I woke up this morning, you know, thinking, you know, when was I gonna get that next text or that next call? But, you know, there won't be a day that goes, goes by that I, I don't remember. Him. In Madison County, Jeremy Toms, WKYT. Tate was 55 years old. Visitation for Tate will be held Thursday, 4 to 8 p.m., followed by his funeral at 1 p.m. Friday. Both those services will be held at the East Side Community Church at Richmond. A house fire in Bell County has left two women dead and a third badly burned. Kentucky State Police said in the release the blaze happened near Kentucky 188 in the Colmar community around 2.30 p.m. Saturday. They say Diana Poff and Walena Reisner of Middlesboro were killed in the fire. The third individual, Winona Poff, was flown to University of Tennessee Medical Center for her injuries. Bell County Sheriff's Department, Bell County Fire Department, and Middlesboro EMS also responded. No foul play is expected at this time, but the investigation is ongoing. West Virginia State Police say a man from Lincoln County is wanted for allegedly threatening to shoot a Wayne County magistrate. Troopers say Denny Lee Adkins of Branch Land is wanted for making terroristic threats. They say threats were made Thursday to shoot a Wayne County magistrate and any law enforcement officer who attempted to arrest Adkins. He's wanted on unrelated charges of strangulation and domestic battery. Anyone with information about Adkins' whereabout is asked to call West Virginia State Police. The newest Kentucky State Police troopers are getting ready for their first day on the job. 71 cadets graduated on Friday after 24 weeks of intense mental and physical training. KSP says this is the largest class they've had since 2014. Those troopers will now be working throughout the Commonwealth. 
KSB says it is currently recruiting for its next cadet class, which is scheduled to begin this summer. People in Lexington will have soon an opportunity to get their record expunged. The city is hosting a clinic and job fair next month. Its focus, its focus is to get help to people past its focus is to help people get past barriers like payments and paperwork and get a second chance. The idea for an expungement clinic was kickstarted by a Kentucky Supreme Court ruling. In late 2021, the court decided to waive expungement fees for low-income Kentuckians with certain violations on their record. There are folks from all walks of life who would benefit from this, um, but ex especially um, communities of color um, who have been marginalized would definitely benefit from um, having the education and getting this work started on their behalf. The expungement clinic and job fair will be held on April 29th at the Central Bank Center at last 8.30 a.m. at the 6 p.m. During the weekend, the Vet Center on Leestown Road hosted a job fair to help veterans become first responders. Federal agencies, state police, plus city, county, and school districts were all there. It was a one-stop shop for veterans to get information, ask questions, and learn the job requirements. Officials say it's a good way to transition from being the armed services, being in the armed services, to serving as a first responder. We know that throughout this country and in this state, several agencies are very low on staffing. Uh, and it was a way to try to figure out uh, to get the best applicants because we all want the best that this Commonwealth have uh, for first responders. So what better is our veterans? About 40 veterans turned out for the event. Organizers say they plan to host another job fair this summer. This past weekend, Eastern Kentucky University held its first geocaching event to get people to explore new places differently. Kelly Watson, an associate professor at EKU, says geocaching is like a little treasure hunt, searching for boxes of different sizes that are hidden throughout the landscape. What do you do? What you do to what? What you do to start is download a free app or you can use a compass. You can then find locations on the app that has geocaching sites and you can go with your friends, family or alone to go on an adventure. We get to explore really cool places like I've seen on the app that we've got about six geocaches out at Taylor Fork Ecological Area and um, I've seen on the comments that people have said, oh, I never even knew this place existed. The event was the first partnership between EKU and the Taylor Fork Exploration Series. They're hoping to put more events on like this in the near future. A new walking trail activity in Montgomery County is designed to help improve children's reading skills. The story walk planned by the community group Leadership Montgomery Class of 2022 opened during the weekend at Botts Park in Mount Sterling. A long stretch of time out of the classroom has left some students falling behind and members believe an educational stroll out in nature could help. So this kind of gives um, a more fun opportunity for kids to get out there and learn how to read. The walking path at Botts Park is currently lined with pages of the book, If You Give a Pig a Pancake. Members of the Leadership Montgomery class say the book on display in the park will change every month. One stage was rocking in Pikeville during the weekend as a local band celebrated the release of its second album. Beck and the Starlight Review celebrated the release of its second album titled Bloom. With the help of the Appalachian Center for the Arts as well as another local band, Zoe Howard and the Yellow Line. This show was not only a celebration of the band's accomplishments, but the first of four kickoff shows prior to July's Mountain Girl Experience. We spoke to lead vocalist Beck Smallwood about what the title of the album meant to her and her band. We were just trying to figure out the next step. What do we do? What do we do? Um, and we spent that time writing. So really, we feel like we bloomed as a band. I bloomed as an artist, as a songwriter over the last you know, couple of years. So that's, it's just a compilation of all those things. Smallwood said she was excited for the release and you could find the band's album on their website or other music streaming platforms. Six forty one here on this Monday morning, and it is a chilly one here even for late March in the twenties region wide from twenty one in Irvine to twenty eight in Harlan and Jackson. We have lost Jacksboro. They're down to twenty seven now. So Jackson and Harlan, the warmest spots in the region at the moment. Out the door forecast today. 
It's not going to be too bad, but bundle up regardless. Give yourself time to get those cars scraped off this morning and warmed up. Some sunshine early, clouds later on, 48, your daytime high. Jim. All right, Brandon, thank you. And thank you for joining us. The time is 642. Still to come on Mountain News this morning. As we see a dip in COVID-19 cases here in the U.S., the flu continues to make a comeback. That's on the way.